Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Dr. Anthony Fauci took to Capitol Hill this week to again sit for hearings on the pandemic and its origins and was defended by Democratic Representative Jamie Raskin, who of course did not miss his opportunity to try to get a Trump jab in there too. Dr. Fauci, um, I want to join my colleague from Florida in apologizing to you uh, that some of our colleagues in the United States House of Representatives seem to want to drag your name through the mud. Uh, they're treating you, Dr. Fauci, like a convicted felon. Actually, you probably wish they were treating you like a convicted felon. They treat convicted felons with love and admiration. Some of them blindly worship convicted felons. Marjorie Taylor Greene apparently took exception to Raskin's comments, and here she is in a heated exchange later on that day. We have Jamie Raskin in there accusing us of worshiping Trump, worshiping as a convicted felon. Well, well, yes, yeah, so is George Floyd and everybody, and you all too, the media worship George Floyd. Democrats worship George Floyd. There were riots burning down the country over George Floyd and Raskin is in there saying we worship him. Excuse me, let me correct you, and this is really important. I don't worship, I worship God, God and Jesus is my savior. I don't worship President Trump. Later on CNN, Dr. Fauci entered the fray, saying MTG's questioning of him during the hearing will lead to threats against his life. Let's watch. Immediately, you could, it's like clockwork, the death threats go way up. So that's the reason why I'm still getting death threats. When you have performances like that unusual performance by Marjorie Taylor Greene, in today's hearing. Those are the kind of things that drive up the death threats because there are a segment of the population out there that believe that kind of nonsense. Hmm. Okay, look, I think some of what Marjorie Taylor Greene did in that subcommittee hearing was not constructive, I guess I'll say that. She obsessed over whether we call him Dr. Fauci or Mr. Fauci, for instance. I'm like, okay, I don't care about that. And then, you know, she's foul mouth, whatever. It, it's not a big deal. But we got we should keep the focus on Dr. Fauci's policies, as they were for most of the committee hearing. And I actually, I think a lot of very conservative people want action instead of just making fun of Dr. Fauci at this or, or attacking him or belittling him. We want No, we want to constrain his successors from engaging in the same policy recommendations and in, in terms of masks and vaccine mandates and all that, and then in terms of actually having perhaps funded the very research that led to the pandemic, that's why he's accused of, of, of those sorts of things. Again, lots of interesting questions emerging on that. I think we're going to get to more of that in a second. But what did you make of the hearings? Jamie Raskin's comments were obviously despicable, and so were most of the Democrats, to defend this man who uh, definitely helped orchestrate the lockdown policies during COVID that did lead to massive deaths of despair that led to people not seeking medical treatment for other ailments or not getting preventative screenings that caused excess mortality during that time period as well. So he can, you know, go on all he wants and the Democrats can defend him by saying, oh, well, we didn't know that much during the, the early days of the pandemic. But the truth is there were a lot of people who did offer different recommendations and were explicitly silenced or pushed out of their jobs or pushed out of the administration because they offered a, an idea that challenged Dr. Fauci. Right, and he wants to say now that the, the guidance he had during the pandemic was just that, was just guidance. He's like, well, I was just telling you what I thought. When I said, you know, first that masks just really make you feel better, but don't do anything. And then I said that, no, God, get a mask. Any mask will ha you know, have this massive health benefit. They said, actually, it's maybe having a marginal, like 10% benefit. If you're gonna wear a mask, you really wanna wear the, high quali the highest quality one, only that's having an effect. You know, okay, that's five different opinions on this. And now he's trying to say, well, I was just giving you my best guess and people could implement whatever policies they wanted. But that's just not the way it worked at all. At the, at, in, in so many municipalities, the guidance, they said, well, what does the local heart, uh, health department say? And the local health department said, well, what does the CDC say? And the CDC, in, in cooperation with Fauci, was essentially setting the policy for the entire country. So it was not, <laughs> didn't feel like voluntary suggestions, guidance to the vast majority of people, especially people who lived in cities, who had, you know, schools shut down, restaurants open, the incoherence of these policies, parks gated shut in, in the outdoors, the, you know, the exercise in human sacrifice of letting people go to the beach, all that kind of incoherence, which 
absolutely spring from the things Fauci said. So I think it is totally right to grill him um, on those policies. And I was actually surprised at the level of still protection of Fauci that Democrats were feeling. I thought the consensus on this was shifting a little bit, and maybe it's just more so on, on the lab leak stuff, which we're gonna, again, we're gonna play some different clips of, of that in a, in a minute. But, um, you know, his, his deputy, the Fauci deputy, Morenz, had been really grilled by Democrats, letting him have it. But there's still some special reverence in the in the place of in, in the hearts of Democrats for Fauci or something. Well, they sold a lot of Fauci prayer candles, so I, I mean there it. there is a, a real reverence. Big prayer candle is still. <laughs> but uh, you couldn't go to church, you know, yeah. during the first three months of the pandemic. But you could pray to Saint Fauci, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, it's true, and I mean even years after. Uh, the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020, um, there were still attempts to dial back any criticism of the way it was handled. Um, there's uh, there's a case that's going to the Supreme Court, Murphy v. Missouri, which yeah. is about the Biden administration's attempts to use social media and big tech companies to silence these epidemiologists who had legitimate questions about the refusal to explore therapeutic treatment for COVID, of the refusal to have more targeted lockdowns protecting the most vulnerable populations, of raising questions about keeping kids out of school and the long-term effects on learning and mental health and, and, and sociological well-being that occurred from that. Um, so this is not something that was just, oh yeah, we did 15 weeks to slow the spread and then realized it didn't work that well, so then we mixed it up. No, kids were out of school for two years, and even into well into the Biden administration, we were still trying to cancel people who said, hey guys, we think maybe the CDC got it wrong. Yeah, or we think, um, you know, maybe that... Uh, um, uh, having had exposure to the virus did give you some level of immunity. Remember, Fauci said, well, we have no idea about that, but the vaccine is going to cause this very durable immunity to prevent you in, in most circumstances from getting COVID. Then it was like, well, there are going to be break, breakthrough cases. Remember that phrasing, breakthrough That's cases? Right. Then everyone had a breakthrough case. It's like, okay, well, it, uh, you know, it's, it's for sick people and the obese and elderly people. It's giving you uh, some of that protection, but, but it was the just virus so much is, back Yeah, and then it was the virus is mutating, so you have to get a booster shot right. to protect against Omicron or Beta, It'll Zeta, whatever. Be the, yeah, always It'll something. It'll always be something. And it was, well, it was never, let's equip you, the American um, uh, public, with what we think the best information is here and then make a choice in, in the best interest of your health and your family. It's like, no, we're going to have this at the highest level. They'll deny it, but it was, we're going to have a policy at the, at the, most senior federal level, we're going to belittle people who d who do not like this policy, and uh, and we're going to pretend there's no dissent when there actually is. When there were actually profound dissent on how well masks were working as a policy intervention at like a state or national level, um, whether keeping uh, a, a, a kids out of school, like you said, was ultimately in their best health interest given their very very low negative COVID outcome rates. Um, versus everything else. Like these questions were being debated. They just didn't want you to debate them. It was actually even worse than people being belittled for having these opinions or yeah. even asking questions. They were called murderers. I mean, they were legitimately yeah. accused of not caring about the well being of their fellow citizen, of their family members. Uh, Bethany Mandel, a friend of ours, I know, was yeah. repeatedly called grandma killer yeah. across social media because she was like, no, I'm taking my kids to the park. Um, it was really some some evil rhetoric that was directed towards people who ended yeah. up actually being right in the long run. Yeah. Now, making death threats is not constructive. No one should do that. If you're 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 making things you know worse for your own side, if you're someone who's tweeting actual death threats or sending actual death threats, you're making your own side look bad. Um, but we should not confuse the need for um, uh, healthy, constructive public commentary with. That's not the same as saying we can't criticize our government officials. Dr. Fauci decreed that he was the science, and to disagree with him was to disagree with science itself. So absolutely, he, he, neither he nor anyone else in public life, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm sure she gets plenty of death threats too, none of them should get that, no one should do that, but we absolutely reserve the right to criticize our government officials. We'll have more free media right after this.